Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Did you know it's been two years since Nvidia first introduced the GeForce 20 series? Yep, it's been that long, and if you somehow haven't heard, next month they're going to start rolling out their next generation of GPUs, rumoured to be much, much more powerful. So that's exciting, and it means a lot of extra work for me, which I am looking forward to, except for the fact that I've got a bit of a tough choice to make. You see, these new graphics cards will support PCI Express 4.0, but our GPU test system, which I've just recently updated with an Intel Core i9-10900K, it doesn't. Rather, it's limited to PCIe 3.0. So I can either stay the course and do what we've always done, test with the fastest gaming CPU available at the time, and then I guess I'd have to investigate PCIe 4.0 performance on the side, at which point I'd really be hoping it makes no difference, otherwise I'd have to spend another week or so updating all our GPU data on a PCIe 4.0 compliant platform. Or, for the first time ever, I could switch our GPU test system over to AMD. And I'd do so knowing in some instances that I may be sacrificing a little bit of performance, but in return we'd have apples to apples data comparing older PCIe 3.0 graphics cards against the newer PCIe 4.0 models, in a wide range of games at multiple resolutions. Another advantage to going with AMD's Ryzen 9 3950X is that I'd be using the same processor architecture as most of you. Let's be honest here, Intel 8th, 9th, and in particular their 10th gen core series sales haven't been good. In fact, they've been really bad for their desktop CPUs. Likewise, we've seen virtually no interest in our 10th gen content, and the same applies to our Z490 content. So with the majority of our audience now using a Ryzen CPU or interested in purchasing one, it's another reason for us to start testing GPUs with them. It's certainly not the primary reason, but it is a reason. As I thought about this more and more, it seemed increasingly obvious to me that we are at a point where we need to switch. PCI Express 4.0 support is far from a gimmick, and I suspect in the not too distant future, it will hand AMD a massive performance advantage. Of course, Intel does plan to support PCIe 4.0 with their next generation, but in the meantime, the technology is exclusive to AMD. Still, I was unsure as to which way we should go with this one, so I handed it over to you guys by creating a poll on our YouTube community page. And the response was overwhelming to say the least. 83% of the over 50,000 people that voted requested we use an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X. So it seems pretty clear based on that that you guys want us to use the 3950X, and since we basically do work for you guys, that's a compelling enough reason to go with AMD. But before we make any final decisions, I thought it'd be wise to dig into the data and see what we're giving up and potentially what we have to gain. If you recall midway through last year, I compared the Ryzen 9 3900X and Core i9 9900K in 36 games using a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. All testing took place at 1080p, and what I found was that on average, the 3900X was just 6% slower, and in a few instances was actually a little bit faster. For the most part though, we were looking at single digit margins with just a few examples where the 3900X was slower by 10% or more. And the biggest loss was seen when testing with StarCraft 2, where the Ryzen processor was 16% slower. In that instance, although the 3900X really wasn't that much slower overall, it made sense to test GPUs with the 9900K, given PCIe support wasn't really an issue at that point in time. So today I want to benchmark a few of the games that will be included in our upcoming next gen GPU reviews, and I'll be looking at two things here. Firstly, how much slower is the 3950X when compared to the 10900K? And I'm not focusing exclusively on 1080p this time, as that won't be the resolution I'll include for GPUs priced over $500 US. So if there's an RTX 3080 Ti, for example, the focus of that review would be on 4K performance. Secondly, I want to see how the Radeon RX 5700 XT performs using these two processors, as it is currently the fastest GPU to support PCIe 4.0. Are we already starting to see some benefits of the increased PCIe bandwidth, or will we have to wait for much faster GPUs and more demanding games before the newer standard is of any benefit? For testing, both the AMD and Intel platforms have been configured with 32GB of DDR4-3200CL14 memory, and cooling them is the Corsair Hydro Series H150i Pro RGB all-in-one liquid cooler. In total, we have 9 games to look at, all of which have been tested at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. So, let's get into the graphs. Starting with Death Stranding at 1080p, 
Here we see when using the RTX 2080 Ti that the 10900K is 9% faster than the 3950X, which that's a decent margin. Then with the slower 5700 XT, the margin was reduced to just 2%. Now, if we increase the resolution to 1440p, we find the margin when using the 2080 Ti is reduced to just 4% in favor of the 10900K. And that I'd say is an insignificant margin. We also find virtually no difference between these two CPUs when using the 5700 XT. So this is very much a GPU limited test. Then finally, at 4K, both systems are entirely GPU bound as the 2080 Ti delivered the same level of performance with both CPUs. And quite interestingly, the 5700 XT was consistently a few frames faster with the 3950X and our three run average landed at 3% ahead. A very insignificant margin, truth be told, but it is interesting given what we saw at 1080p and 1440p. Now, like a lot of games, especially those using low level APIs, Doom Eternal isn't very CPU demanding. And as a result, even at 1080p with an RTX 2080 Ti, we see the same level of performance on both platforms. And of course, this was also true with the 5700 XT. Naturally then increasing the resolution does nothing to change the situation as the GPU bottleneck just increases. And this game doesn't appear to require excessive PCIe bandwidth. Then finally, the 4K resolution, we find more of the same. The 3950X has no trouble keeping pace with the 10900K in this title. Moving on, we have F1 2020, and starting with the 1080p results, it's clear the 10900K does enjoy a performance advantage in this title, boosting frame rates with the 2080 Ti by 8% over the 3950X. It was also 5% faster with the 5700 XT, so not massive margins, but the Intel CPU is clearly faster under these conditions. However, once again, we find when increasing the resolution, it does start to reduce those margins. And now the 10900K is just 5% faster with the 2080 Ti and 3% faster with the 5700 XT, both of which I'd say are insignificant differences. Then finally, at the 4K resolution, there is no distinguishing between the 10900K and 3950X. Even with the 2080 Ti, we're looking at the same 95 FPS on average. Next up, we have Metro Exodus. And here we again find that the 10900K is up to 8% faster at 1080p when comparing the average frame rate, though it was just 3% faster with the 5700 XT. Again, the margin is reduced to 1440p, and now the Intel CPU is just 5% faster with the 2080 Ti, and just 2% faster with the 5700 XT. Then finally, once again, we're looking at identical performance at 4K. Here we're again entirely GPU limited, and it really doesn't matter which of these two CPUs you use especially when using a high-end PCIe 3.0 graphics card. Like Doom Eternal, and many other games for that matter, Resident Evil 3 isn't very CPU sensitive, and as a result, even at 1080p, there's no difference in performance between these two CPUs with either GPU. Naturally then, the same is also true at 1440p, though here the 3950X was actually slightly faster than the 10900K. We're talking about just a few frames, but it was consistently slightly faster. So that's interesting. Then as we bump the resolution up to 4K, the 3950X pulled further ahead with the 2080 Ti and is now up to 5% faster, which was somewhat of an unexpected result. Not a huge margin by any means, but it is a small win for the red team. When testing with Rainbow Six Siege, we find that the 10900K was 7% faster with the 2080 Ti at 1080p. It's a reasonable increase in FPS given we're talking about a 7% increase from 364 frames per second, but we're also only testing at 1080p. The margin seen when using the 5700 XT is virtually non-existent. Here the Intel CPU was just a percent faster. Now testing at 1440p sees the margin with the 2080 Ti reduced to just 2%. So a pretty meaningless difference here really. Then at 4K we see something quite interesting. Here the 3950X was slightly faster. We're talking totally insignificant differences, but the AMD CPU was often a few frames faster. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a very CPU demanding game, though please note for this one I am using the built-in benchmark, as I often do for GPU testing. Here the 3950X and 10900K delivered virtually identical performance with both the 2080 Ti and 5700 XT. That being the case, we find the same story at 1440p, identical performance with both CPU and GPU combinations. Then at 4K, the results are again much the same, though the 3950X was consistently 1 to 2 FPS faster, which is curious. The second last game I've tested is Wolfenstein Youngblood, and like Doom Eternal, it's not a CPU sensitive game. So at 1080p, we're seeing virtually identical performance using either CPU. We're talking just a 3% performance advantage in favor of Intel. 
And that being the case, there's really nothing in it at 1440p. So either CPU is able to maximize performance with the 2080 Ti. And of course, the same is also true of the 4K resolution. Here, the CPU used doesn't really matter. Well, assuming that it's either a 10900K or a 3950X. Now, last up, we have Horizon Zero Dawn. And this game, it's a bit of a roller coaster. At 1080p, we find some pretty devastating results for AMD as the 10900K is 18% faster, and that is a significant margin. We see virtually no difference when using the 5700 XT, but it's the 2080 Ti results that are the issue. And even at 1440p, the 2080 Ti is still 9% faster with the 10900K, 14% faster if we look at the 1% low performance. However, we also see something else here that's very interesting. The 5700 XT is up to 9% faster with the 3950X, though it is just 3% faster on average. Not huge margins, I'll admit, but the Radeon GPU was consistently faster with the 3950X, a strong suggestion that the extra PCIe bandwidth is being utilized here. Now, at the 4K resolution, the 10900K is just 3% faster when comparing the average frame rates, while the 3950X was 6% faster with the 5700 XT. So based on that, if the 2080 Ti supported PCIe 4.0, there is a good chance performance at 4K would be slightly better with the 3950X. Okay, so those results weren't terribly surprising. We've benchmarked the crap out of Intel's core series and AMD's Ryzen processors at this point, so we have a very good idea of how they compare. That said, it was interesting to see the 3950X often offering a little extra at 4K, and in a few instances we saw better performance with the 5700 XT, presumably due to the PCIe 4.0 support. But before we get into that, let's quickly go over the data. At 1080p with the 2080 Ti, the 3950X was on average 5% slower, with the vast majority of the results single-digit margins. The biggest loss was seen in Horizon Zero Dawn, where the 3950X was 15% slower. An outlier here, but as we saw in the 9900K versus 3900X comparison last year, there are games where this can happen at 1080p. Jumping up to 1440p reduces that margin to just 2%, and now the biggest margin was just 8%, with the rest 5% or less. So the difference here for the most part is negligible with the current GeForce King. Then at 4K, the 3950X actually hit the lead, albeit by a single percent. The biggest win was seen in Resident Evil 3, where the Ryzen CPU offered a small 5% performance boost, a meaningless difference in the grand scheme of things, but still a positive result for AMD, and it means when testing at 4K, it really doesn't matter which of these two CPUs are used. Even if the next gen GPUs are say 50% faster, it really shouldn't change that much. Now with a mid-range GPU like the 5700 XT, we see little to no difference between these two CPUs, even at 1080p. The biggest margin was seen in F1 2020, where the 3950X was 5% slower, but outside of that, we're talking margins of one to 2% at most. Then at 1440p, we see identical performance on average. The 3950X was up to 3% faster in Horizon Zero Dawn, while it was up to 3% slower in F1 2020. Again, it is the 4K results that are most interesting. Here, there wasn't a single instance where the 3950X was slower than the 10900K. Granted, for the most part, it was 1% to 2% faster, and while it was consistently 1% to 2% faster at the time of testing, that's still within the margin of error. However, we're getting beyond that with Horizon Zero Dawn, and it looks like here the extra bandwidth PCIe 4.0 offers is helping boost performance of the mid-range GPU, which is surprising to see. When you consider the fact that the Ryzen 9 3950X was just 2% slower on average at 1440p, it's really not a stretch to say that the margin could be reduced to nothing or perhaps even swing a few percent in AMD's favor with a much more powerful GPU supporting PCIe 4.0 especially when testing with the latest and greatest games. For new GPU releases, I'm not interested in testing games such as StarCraft 2, World of Tanks, Rocket League, Fortnite, CSGO, and so on. They're not exactly cutting edge titles, and as such, they're not gonna push next-gen hardware to its limits. Get an RTX 2060 if that's all you wanna play. Games that I'd like to add to the list include titles such as Microsoft's Flight Simulator 2020 and Cyberpunk 2077, for example. As a side note, if you care about performance in competitive titles and you want to know what CPU to get, well, we have an entire series dedicated to that testing. And it's true, Intel does have an advantage here for those seeking maximum performance. 
but it's also unlikely that upcoming AAA titles will see a strong CPU bottleneck with either the 10900K or 3950X at 1440p and beyond. And as I said, there is a chance PCIe 4.0 could come into play. I'm not banking on it though, and as we just saw for the majority of the testing we'll be doing with the higher end GPUs, it's not going to matter too much if we or any other reviewer use the 10900K or the 3950X. On that note, further luring us towards the 3950X is the fact that few or maybe even no reviewers will use it for testing next gen GPUs. Breaking away from the norm can be a bit risky, but I think it may add something extra to our content if we do. And giving us confidence to do so, of course, is 83% of you suggesting that you know, we do use the 3950X. But whichever way we go, there's a good chance before too long anyway, we're gonna have to throw all the data away and start over once Zen 3 arrives. If Zen 3 is as good as we think it's going to be, then it will make the decision a heck of a lot easier. It's just a shame that it's not arriving before the new GPUs. Anyway, let me know what you think about the data in this video. Was any of it surprising to you? And ultimately, what do you think we should do? Ditch Intel in favor of AMD or stick with our current Core i9 10900K test system? Either way, I need to get benchmarking like yesterday. So don't waste any time letting me know what you think in the comment section below. That's gonna do it for this video. If you'd like to join us over on Patreon to get access to some exclusive content, our Discord chat, for example, uh, our monthly live stream, which Tim and myself will be doing soon. We do that on our Patreon exclusive channel. Uh, there's also behind the scenes content that you can watch and a few other things. If you're interested, check that out in the link in the video description below. It is a great way to support our work and the channel and also become part of the awesome Harbour Unbox community. Also, sorry if the rain was loud towards the end of this video, it has started to pick up here and it's going to only get heavier. So there was no point delaying this and waiting for it to clear because that's not going to happen today. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.